cut across to our poll panel up to our uh, panelists this evening uh, lots of questions that are being raised is the opposition now going to come together especially when it comes down to the caste census make it a rallying point going ahead for elections 2024 and why is it that the government is dithering from holding a caste census with the caste census, uh, if it takes place at all, will it reveal fault lines uh, in India's caste metric system, which could possibly be unfavorable to the BJP? Is the BJP somewhere down the line in a catch-22 situation here? Let's uh, take it to our panelists this evening. Joining me is Manoj Jha, Rajya Sabha MP, Rahul Srivastav, National Affairs Editor, India Today TV, Sanjay Kumar, uh, Co-Director, Lok Niti, CSTS and Sophologist. Uh, Cutting across uh, to Manojha first. Uh, Manojha, you know, not as a politician, not as a Rajya Sabha member representing your political party, I want to ask you, um, as an academic, as a professor, what about merit? I'm sure a lot of students ask you. In this day and age where ultimately Baba Sahib Ambedkar had envisioned a casteless India, we are once again looking for a caste census which will be pro reservation again. You, you know, your question has three, four questions and almost all, uh, all the questions have a different trajectory altogether. But uh, as, as, a, as somebody who understands sociology, who teaches social work in Delhi University, I can tell you for any government initiative, for any governor, governance structure, for any bureaucratic endeavor to reach to the catchment area, you need scientific data. Why do, you, why do we need scientific data? 1931 was the last caste census held. Subsequently, Pakistan and Bangladesh, which were part of till 1931, they are different entities now. So the data which uh, BP Mandal Commission col uh, co collected and collated subsequently, it reached 52% of the uh, population of OBC. It could be more, because that was uh, a calculation broadly drawn from 1931. Having said that, then the reservation was reduced only to 27% because the ceiling was, according to Indira Sahani judgment, and, and a couple of more judgment on 50%. Now with EWS reservation, Honorable Supreme Court has said 50% is no more sacrosanct. So in order to look at the broader contours of deepening of democracy, it is, it is in the fitness of things that you ensure representation. That's why the demand is not only from Bihar. Bihar is already ahead with caste survey. It's in almost every state, people are demanding because the overall representation of marginalized community is 7 to 10 percent. But Mr. Jha, you know, India's political social history stands testimony to the fact that reservation on the basis of caste hasn't quite entirely helped the upliftment of any particular caste. It's only but created a creamy layer within that particular caste. And you would admit that. You, you know something, I, I must tell you historically, already the, in, amongst OBC there is a creamy layer. Now, the government of India appointed Rohini Commission to look at the sub-categorization of OBC communities. Interestingly, the commission has been given more than 23 extensions. You know, the problem is that sub-categorization shall only be scientific, shall only be feasible and doable once you have the data, you are actually providing, uh, looking for a scheme of uh, division of things of an apple by Rohini Commission without knowing the size of the apple, what all constitute in that apple. So first you need to have that data, then issues of categorization, sub-categorization come. I mean, I mean, the government is completely confused because you know this government actually has no blueprint with regard to social justice, and I'm saying this on record, because if you look at the uh, answers they give in the parliament, the answers are in themselves. They, they tell you that, that the wisdom index of this government on these issues is practically uh, zero. But Mr. Jha, you know, you talk about social justice. Many would say in this day and age, the true social justice is if you give reservation on the basis of uh, economic disparity, where you give reservation on the basis of EWS, economically weaker sections. So hold a census on EWS was what many would suggest. Many uh, who are Brahmins, uh, the proverbial uh, upper caste, uh, are very poor. Many would suggest that in this day and age, poverty has no caste. 
I, I tell you, I wish, uh, I'm, I'm sorry to say I wish I, I was in a class where I could have taken, I have been talking about these things. I'll tell you that there is established uh, fact that I agree. There are, there, is, there are instances of poverty even in so-called upper caste. But their poverty does not derive from their caste background. Whereas the poverty amongst marginalized communities, whether it is SC, ST, and OBC, they have a direct uh, relation, just what we call correlation with the caste background. Otherwise, how it happens that in the caste ladder, which is based on hierarchy and pollution and purity, higher you go, lesser extent, uh, instance of poverty you find. Lower you go, you find poverty in abundance. So this is very clear sociologically, anthropologically. The only thing is that many people think that poverty uh, knows no caste. So, sorry, ma'am. Poverty knows caste. It has maximum address, maximum address, maximum concentration amongst the subaltern communities, which constitute OBC, SC, and ST. Manoj, how many would also suggest away from all the addresses that you're talking about, it's a political question that you want to address and milk, and that is an eye on the OBC votes which have gravitated towards the BJP. You want to put the Bharatiya Janta Party in a catch-22 situation where uh, somewhere down the line you want to invoke the OBC community asking for a larger chunk because there should ideally be a larger chunk in terms of there is a caste census which would somewhere down the line either eliminate or alienate rather uh, the OBC community if, you, if the government doesn't hold a caste census and if it does hold a caste census then alienate uh, the upper class which are anyway with the BJP political sophology would suggest. I'll tell you very frankly, the day I spoke, my leaders spoke, believe me, I'm saying it on record. This is not a political issue. Any issue which involves psychological, social, and political empowerment of marginalized communities, any issue which involves the broadest possible idea around deepening of democracy, it is not political. Otherwise, however, I must say that the choice of toothpaste or a shampoo is also a political issue. That who is dominating the market? We have had enough in terms of a gentleman okay. who has been dominating several core sectors and the government is silent about it about 20,000 crores. So there is politics everywhere. But the fact, fact of the matter is, this is not a political question, but if the government is adamant, is not willing to listen to the voices of approximately 85% of the population, look, then it can have a political momentum, a political traction, which can derail, derail this fictitious idea of that BJP okay. is invincible, BJP is unbeatable, all these fictitious ideas shall be uh, fought on the streets. Mr. Jha, appreciate you joining us.